Hi, I'm Celine Young, and I'm happy to be here today with Olivia. Now that we've reflected on factors that might be barriers to resilience, we want to talk about what to do when stress is not manageable. If you're trying different strategies to build resilience and don't feel like they're working for you, it might be time to seek additional support. It's normal and healthy to seek help when you need it. We want to provide you with some resources, both online and what you might find in person at your local institution. We want to acknowledge that we aren't the experts in this area, so we've asked some of our colleagues to share their resources and expertise. My name is Susanna Harris and I'm a PhD student in microbiology at Chapel Hill. There are some really good resources. Uh, a lot of places will have an office for postdoctoral affairs. Mm -hmm. And although that sounds very technical, the people who work in those offices usually really want the people that they're serving to come in and ask for help. The support staff at universities really do want to support their students, their trainees, their faculty. So my biggest advice would be to kind of reach out to the people that you trust and ask them to help you decide where to go to next. So if you feel like you trust your PI, then go to them and say, hey, I'm not, I'm not doing very well, I want some support, or these are the things that I'm doing, I just wanted to let you know. I think that that's extremely healthy, but if you can't do that, it's okay. And it's very okay to then go to the dean of the graduate students and go to their office and ask, or go to campus health, or go to the office of postdoctoral affairs and say, I'm having these issues, I need some sort of support. How do I start navigating this? So I think it's a very, it depends on the person, but I, as much as I want everyone to be open and honest with who they are and what they're dealing with, that's not always possible. And there is no shame in getting help however is going to work for you. So my name is Karen Brohard. I'm a counselor in the Faculty and Staff Assistance Office at Boston University, which is the Employee Assistance Program for the university. Most universities have an office like ours. It might be called an Employee Assistance Program. It might be called a Faculty Staff Counseling Service or a Work-Life Connection Office or an Employee Assistance Program, but it's a really wonderful resource for you to know about that um, is available for free and is a confidential service that's available for faculty, staff, and their family members. So I'm a clinical social worker. I am a licensed behavioral health provider, as are the staff in employee assistance programs generally. Um, but people come around work issues, life issues, stress. Doesn't have to be a behavioral health problem. Um, we're here to support resilience, to support wellness, to support well-being, and encourage people to make use of the office just to have a place to talk something through, to talk about the stresses that you're dealing with, to um, maybe think through, are there some additional coping strategies that would be useful? I mean, there's so many stresses associated with being a postdoc. For many people, it's moving to a new city or a new location from bringing family members um, who are dealing with their own adjustment issues. So. There's so much that um, can be helpful just to talk through with somebody, and we provide that service. So people come, um, again, to support their resilience, to support their well-being, and sometimes with these stresses, people really do develop anxiety, depression, um, behavioral health issues, and so then we are licensed behavioral health providers, and we can be helpful with those issues. Um, so if you go for a session, we'll ask, what are, you know, what are the concerns? What are you grappling with? Try to get a picture of kind of you in your life and uh, the context. Um, what are the stresses in your life? What stresses did you have before you came here? What kind of struggles have you had before you came here for this postdoc position? Um, so get a sense of history and then get a sense of, of what might be helpful to you at this point. Um, sometimes that is meeting with a counselor in the Employee Assistance Program for a few sessions and sometimes it's getting connected to other resources in the community. That might be um, psychotherapists, it might be psychiatrists, um, but maybe some ongoing counseling or therapy or sometimes medication to address mental health issues can be really helpful. So what are some of the indications that you might want to see a behavioral health provider? Certainly if you're having some difficulty functioning either at work or at home, that's a, a cause for concern. You might find that you're not concentrating well, your memory is not as good as it used to be, or you're feeling really jumpy and irritable and distracted easily. Um, 
Often people are having difficulty sleeping when they're really stressed and that can become a compounding problem already feeling stressed, then having difficulty sleeping, so then you're sleep deprived. Um, that can really lead to anxiety, depression, if you're just kind of feeling like it's hard to get out of bed, it's sort of hard to have the energy or the motivation to um, take care of what you need to in life. Um, those are certainly signs that it would be good to speak to somebody about it. You know, it can get more serious if people really start to feel despairing or hopeless about their situation. N you know, nothing's gonna change, there's no hope even having thoughts about wanting to die, wanting to hurt themselves, that's a more urgent situation where you would really want to let somebody know right away. Sometimes people have concerns about the privacy of their communication with a counselor, and the counselors and employee assistance programs are licensed behavioral health providers, and by law, those communications are um, protected and confidential. So the counselor does not share outside of the office with anyone, even that someone has come to the office, unless they have written permission to do so or if there is an immediate safety concern. If someone is suicidal, um, if there's a threat kind of issue that someone, they would need to let somebody know about that. But otherwise, the communication is confidential. So it can also be a good place to, to talk about if you're feeling mistreated in the workplace in some way. If there's harassment, sexual harassment, gender-based harassment, many other offices on a campus, if you report that, it needs to go to the Title IX coordinator. But a communication with a behavioral health provider is confidential, so it can be a place to think through, this is what's happening in the workplace, is this something that I want to report and take action on? So we've had um, many postdocs who have um, sought help and assistance in our office, as well as um, family members that have traveled to the U.S. with them, who often are very isolated. You know, sometimes their visa does not enable them to work, and so they're isolated at home while their spouse is working long postdoc hours. Um, so this is um, a resource that's available for family members as well. Um, I find that the postdocs I've seen are very hardworking, very accomplished, um, and often very driven and hard on themselves. Um, when they feel they haven't met some standard that they have for themselves or make a mistake, can be so harsh with themselves, um, really using very mean language. You know, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm a failure, um, you know, very harsh. And, you know, the psychological research really shows that, in fact, responding with more compassion, self-compassion, is much more sustaining in the long run. And, you know, looking at some of the research of Kristen Neff, um, psychologist who studies self-compassion and on her website has exercises in self-compassion and kind of guided meditation. I think those are much more helpful in getting through the stresses of a postdoc position. Some of the research from positive psychology is also helpful. Um, gratitude practices can be very beneficial. Um, mindfulness can be very helpful and um, we'll be sharing some of the resources where you can learn more about those practices and kind of tools and tips that we have learned through positive psychology research on what helps people to flourish.